Hey, what's up guys, and welcome to Geno's Gadgets. Today we are gonna talk about a device that has gotten a lot of attention over the last two or three months, uh, the Galaxy S8. Uh, so I've been able to spend a good bit of time with the Galaxy S8 um, for a few weeks, um, you know, right around the time it was uh, announced. Uh, and then when it came out, uh, I pre-ordered one and I got one myself. Uh, after I got done with the test units and uh, I've spent a good bit of time with this device and I decided the week that it came out that I wanted you know to use it as my daily driver so I've been using this device as my day-to-day -day device um, I have several different devices but uh, I landed on a, a Galaxy S8 Plus actually um, is the one that I chose to be my daily driver so uh, just wanted to take a moment to just really kind of take a little bit of a, a look back at this device kind of after the hype, post hype. So it's, you know, uh, there was a lot of uh, coverage for the device when it was first being announced. Uh, there was a lot of hype. Oh, is it going to do this? Is it going to have wings? Is it, it going to cook me uh, breakfast or make my coffee? Uh, you know, there were some firsts with this device uh, and there was a lot of fanfare. But what I want to look at today is just like, two and a half, three months later, is it living up to the hype? So that's what we're going to look at today on Geno's Gadgets. So I want to jump right in. Um, and the first thing that I want to talk about is basically after the hype, looking at the design and the colors of the device. I have uh, the devices here and we're going to take a quick look at those. All right, so as you can see here, we the device comes in three different colors, and I have the Galaxy S8 Plus models here because I didn't have all the different colors in the Galaxy S8. So I have the Arctic Silver here, and I have the Midnight Black here, and I have what's called Orchid Gray. Now, as you can see, you know, um, the black is truly black. I know in the past, Samsung has had some devices that were semi-black or kind of speckled. This thing is like jet, jet, like piano black. I don't know if you can tell uh, from the focus here, but I mean, it is truly black. And I believe that is my favorite one. It just looks slick in that really jet black color. Um, and the Arctic Silver is probably the shiniest. So if you like to shine, uh, I'm not mad at you, shine. Uh, this is gonna be the one, the Arctic Silver. Man, you can almost see your reflection. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like, hey, what's up? I mean, you can see right in that thing. You can use it almost as a mirror. So it's really, really super shiny, super slick looking. Uh, when the light hits it, sometimes it actually looks kind of white out in bright sunlight. Uh, and then the last but not least, uh, the Orchid Gray. Um, so the Orchid Gray here is a really slick looking color. It's kind of a midways point between the black and the silver. Um, it's, it's right in the middle. And it's cool because sometimes it looks gray. Sometimes it looks kind of like a pur has a little bit of a purple kind of violet hue to it, but it's it, it's really cool. It's, and it's really I think this is a really good unisex color um, because it doesn't look like, you know, uh, it, it appeals to, to, to everyone uh, because it's such a unique color. Don't know if I've ever seen a, that color on a device before. So really, really slick. Again, Arctic Silver, Midnight Black and orchid gray so now that we had a chance to look at the colors we're going to talk a little bit about the design uh, and talk a little bit about the performance how i found the performance of these devices because let's face it all devices that are coming out in 2017 are going to be super super fast right when they come out but you know a few weeks later you've got all your pictures and you know, you you know downloaded 20 different text messages, 20,000 text messages, and have 
your five email accounts, once we start loading these devices down, um, sometimes they're not quite as fast. Um, so I have um, all of the, the versions of the phone are 64 gigabits. Uh, so that's plenty of storage for most people. 64, I mean, especially, you know, the lifespan of your average phone is two years. Um, don't really think you'll need much more than, um, than 64 gigabits. But if you are a road warrior and you use your phone for everything uh, you do, it is expandable. So you do have that micro SD card slot that you can use uh, to expand the device up to 256 gigabytes. So it will support uh, a 256 megabit uh, micro SD card, um, which is awesome. Uh, I was able to take advantage of that uh, bundle deal that Samsung did and I got one of those 256 gigabit cards and man, it is awesome. Don't think I'm gonna be running out of memory, memory anytime soon. So that's a really great feature. Um, but let's talk about performance. These devices are super, super snappy. Um, and I'll just grab this one really quick to show you. Um, very, very snappy devices. And as you can see, I've, I have probably a few different um, applications open right now. Um, don't know if you can see those really clearly, but uh, I've got probably four or five different applications open uh, in the background. But YouTube, um, go jumping back and forth between YouTube um, and some of the other apps that I have open here. Looks like I've got some notes. Um, photo gallery. Um, text messages. Oh, look at that. That Regal Theaters. Yeah. Uh, going to be checking out some, some upcoming movies this summer. But yeah, um, just an awesome all-around device. Very snappy. Uh, you do have multi-window on this device, so it's, it's really easy to do. You can just hold this guy here. And let's do like text messaging. So I have the text messaging app open. And it's showing me how to do it. I already know how to use it. Um, we'll open up the gallery. Uh, and it's cool because, you, I mean, you can drag and drop stuff. This is a, <laughs> a hard drive that I'm thinking about picking up. But yeah, I can I can uh, take and drag and drop that picture of that hard drive right over into a text thread and drop that right into that text message and send it. Um, just boop, send it right, you know. So it's pretty awesome. I mean, you can, I mean, it's just a really, really snappy device uh, and it will basically do anything you need it to do. So even two and a half months later, um, got it loaded down. It's still snappy fast. Um, People are, t uh, uh, I've heard people mention things like, hey, you know, how is it? Does it lag? Does it, uh, some of the devices that are not pure Android uh, and that have uh, a lot of features like this one baked into um, a non, you know, non vanilla Android like Samsung. Samsung has something called TouchWiz or Grace UX. So they have their own user interface running over top of the Android operating system. And uh, they really improved it. Uh, it's still super, super snappy, as you can see. Uh, and also with this being one of the edge devices, uh, don't wanna leave that out. We can pull over that edge and jump right into some shortcuts to apps and things like that. So pretty, pretty slick with that as well. Um, but yeah, the performance has been awesome on this device. The camera is another thing that is a huge, huge win. Um, and I'll open that really quick. But the camera is awesome. I'll maximize that. But the camera's super, super good. Really, really slick user interface. You can swipe right over to different features, um, gestures. You even have like some different filters and things that are built in. Um, they even have a feature on here where they have like some bunny ears and, and things like that, kind of like Snapchat that you can um, put on yourself, put bunny, bunny ears on and stuff like that. Just some fun things uh, that are already baked into the app of the camera. Uh, another thing that doesn't get a lot of attention in these reviews when people are talking about Samsung's latest flagship devices is Samsung Pay. Guys, Samsung Pay 
is a boss application. It really is. I mean, there's uh, there's Apple Pay out there, there's um, Android Pay, and there's Samsung Pay. So the big one for me, the reason why I feel like Samsung Pay is such a W, is such a win, is just that you can basically use it everywhere. Um, I think uh, the last uh, numbers that I got, I think uh, Apple Pay is accepted at roughly four to five million locations, where Samsung Pay is accepted in 30 five million locations so uh i mean just a huge huge vast difference you know because you know four or five million sounds like a lot until you hear 30 plus million you know locations that accept samsung pay so it's really really awesome um and like i said all you have to do is swipe right up and put up put, pull out one of your credit cards uh you you build up points and stuff also i don't know if you can see um, but it looks like I have quite a few points here, um, well over 4,000, close, close to 5,000 apps, sorry, points. Those points you can, you can use to buy gift cards. Um, you can use, uh, like I think I almost have, if you go to redeem on the device, you can look at some of the different things that you can buy with the points. You can enter contests, you can get, um, Yeah, so $5 gift card for 1,500 points. Uh, I'm close to the 5,000 area now, so once I have 5,000 points, I'll be able to get a $20 uh, prepaid Visa card. So, I mean, and it's just for buying stuff that you're already buying anyway. I use it uh, for gas, uh, groceries, buying fast food or something for lunch. Um, it's pretty much accepted everywhere, even if the cashier doesn't know you know when you pull it out they're like oh we don't have this they immediately kind of go deer in headlights they have it you know i i think i've been to like two or three places of the thousands of places that i went to where i actually could not use samsung pay um it's accepted there even if they don't know it um the next thing that i want to touch on besides you know we've talked about the after the hype We've talked about the performance of the device, looked at the three different colors. Uh, also a big draw with these devices is Samsung's ecosystem. Um, that is something that I guess really over the last year or so, I didn't understand why ecosystem was such a big deal. Um, Samsung has an ecosystem really second to none right now because I have a Samsung te smart television, um, I have a uh, 6300, a 6000 series um, 4K television, and it's it's an awesome television. It's not the you know it's not one of your high high end 4Ks, uh, but it is still an excellent picture. You know, you got HDR support, um, and you know when you get into UHD resolution, everything looks good on the TV. Well, I have uh, the ability. It's funny you, you don't really have to do you don't have to buy like these Chromecasts and these uh, all these different you know wireless beaming sticks and stuff out there. If you have a Samsung television and a Samsung smartphone or tablet, the function is built into the device for you to be able to basically mirror your screen to the television, and it's called Smart View right here. I don't know if you can see that up in the in the top corner there, but Samsung Smart View is built into these devices already. And so all you have to do is click on that and it'll link right up to your television and you can watch something off of your TV or put pictures or a home video or something of your family vacation right up on the TV just by boom. And it shows up right away. That's an awesome feature. A lot of people also don't re don't realize um, that you can do what's called reverse screen mirroring. So, let's say you know the game's on, or you know your favorite you know reality show's on, but you need to run into the kitchen and you know take something out of the oven or something like that. You can do reverse screen mirroring, so you can pull the content, the television show, off of the TV onto the screen of your of your tablet or Samsung phone. Um, and actually be able to control the volume and the channels 
from right from your phone. So it's a really, really cool feature. Um, uh, and you have something called Samsung Flow and Samsung SideSync as well. Um, SideSync is this little uh, icon right here with the with the two arrows. SideSync allows you to see the screen uh, and the content of your Galaxy phone on the screen of your computer or the screen of your Samsung tablet. And it's cool because it works not only with Windows PCs, uh, but it works with Macs as well. So um, if you're sitting down doing some work on your Mac, uh, you won't miss a text message or a phone call or anything just because your phone's downstairs or on the charger. Uh, it, it basically, you can see your entire user interface of right here. So basically on the screen of your device is basically a little cutout bubble of your phone. So any messages or anything that comes in, you can basically manage your entire phone right from your um, right from the screen of your PC, MacBook or Samsung tablet. So it's a really cool feature. Um, so a lot of people don't know about that. So that's side sync. Also, you have Samsung Flow. Samsung Flow is this little blue icon here. Samsung Flow allows you the opportunity to, when you're interacting, let's say you're reading a really cool article online um, on, your, on your PC or on your Samsung tablet, you can click Samsung Flow and the next time you pick up your phone, uh, you can pick up with that same news article right from your right from your phone. So Samsung Flow basically creates a flow between your devices for content that you're looking at or if you're in the middle of, of reading something but you couldn't finish, you gotta catch a plane or catch a ride or something like that, you can pick right back up where you were. So Samsung Flow is pretty awesome too. So that ecosystem is really strong uh, between all of your screens, between your television screen, your phone screen, uh, your PC screen, um, your tablet screen, all Samsung's devices connect really well and offer some really strong features. Um, the camera on this guy too, uh, as I mentioned before, is really strong. There has been some misinformation out there that the Galaxy S7 and Galaxy S8 have the same camera. That is not true. That simply is not true. Um, they are both 12 megapixels, uh, but there's quite a few cameras out there, I think, that are 12 megapixels. I think the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus's camera is 12 megapixels. Um, I think the Google Pixel phone uh, has a 12 megapixel sensor, but they're all really different sensors. Um, the uh, Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus are actually using a Sony IMX333 um, sensor. I, I believe it's IMX333 um, or 360. Uh, but anyway, it's a Sony sensor. Uh, and I, if I'm getting that wrong, I'll make sure I put that correct in the description below. But it's a Sony sensor. Um, and it, it's quite impressive, especially in low light. Um, and the autofocus, I find it to be even better than the one on the Galaxy S7. The Galaxy S7 already had, uh, because they're using dual pixel technology, which is what the digital SLR cameras use. Um, the digital SLR cameras use uh, that to basically dedicate pretty much 100% of all of the pixels to the task of focusing on your subject. So they really, really lock in on wh whatever you're looking at. It really, really takes, you know, just boom, locks in on the subject and captures it. So that's what makes your pictures turn out really clear and look really good. So you don't get those really blurry photos. Uh, so that dual pixel te technology is helping you there. It's also helping you in low light situations uh, when a lot of pictures get really grainy. So excellent excellent i've been really impressed with the camera quality um uh taking pictures just on a day to day i went on vacation last week and uh, just really got some really impressive shots uh in all kinds of different lighting conditions and uh like i said super fast auto focusing um really really cool camera so in summary guys um 
I would say go and check this device. If you're someone that's kind of on the fence with this one or maybe comparing this to you know other devices that are out, I would say definitely give it give it a solid look because in my experience with, with I mean, I interact with all kinds of different phones and uh, test a lot of phones and things like that. And in my personal opinion, this is the best phone out. I mean, you have a lot of firsts with this phone. Uh, you have a gigabit modem on this phone. So as far as your internet speeds and connectivity at a tower level between your respective carrier and your individual phone, you're going to have the best signal and the best speed on this phone than any other phone. I mean, if you're standing beside someone um, with a different phone and a Galaxy S8 in the same area with the same you know amount of, of, of reception um, or whatever, you're going to have more bars and or better reception than they do um, because of the, the modems that are built into this device. Also, Bluetooth 5.0. I believe this is the first phone to, to offer Bluetooth 5.0. Uh, you actually have HDR support um, on the screen of this phone. Uh, so uh, these screens have awesome technology. Uh, Samsung uses Super AMOLED technology in these screens so these screens are not backlit so they're able to replicate colors in a really unique way because the pixels they emit their own light um so uh, uh the amoled name stands for active matrix organic light emitting diode and so essentially what's happening is is the pixels actually have sub sub pixels that emit their own light so they don't need um, to do what traditional LCDs and LED screens do, uh, which is it's essentially just a LCD panel with a flashlight shining and pushing light through. Um, there's no need for that because the pixels actually create their own light. Uh, so that's why you get those really, really nice, deep, saturated, bright colors um, and really, really dark, deep um, blacks and shadowed areas. Uh, contrast levels are second to none. So uh, the screens on these devices, the cameras, the speed, just the all around experience. Uh, this is also one of the first devices to utilize a um, an iris sensor. So I'm someone that wears glasses. So when I do it, I have to do this number and kind of tip my glasses up but it's lightning fast and extremely accurate. So it's really, really easy to unlock your phone. Also, you can have it set up to basically where you, uh, you don't have to put in all your passwords every time you go to a website or an app or something. Samsung Pass ties in your fingerprint and or your irises to unlock applications and sign you into websites so you don't have to sit there and type in your password every, every time. So that's a huge, really really neat uh, convenient feature as well so in summary guys it's the best phone that you can buy right now um, in 2017 in July of 2017 there's not anything that can really um, hold a candle to it so um, and that's just from the literal point now just because I'm saying it's the best phone out it may not be the best phone for you um, uh, you may work with some different things or you may be looking for something different uh, in a smartphone that um, you feel like another phone provides better. But I would say as a whole, as far as I'm concerned, it's hands down the best phone you can buy. So check out the Galaxy S8, guys. Again, thanks for watching. Um, give me a thumbs up or a like. Um, when you get a chance, also subscribe. Geno's Gadgets is going to be covering quite a few devices uh, in the near future. Uh, and we've got some news and rumor stuff, some hot news and rumors coming up pretty soon, too. And uh, even some leaked devices that we're going to cover here soon. So again, thanks for watching and have a great day.